Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and welcome to a rather peculiar noise because yes I have started getting Astro uh, Science 2 up and running and that means I've started having to make these uh, graphometrics facilities and they make a very strange noise and they look quite weird and they're running a bit slowly because this, the game is starting to get a bit too big for my computer unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> this is a little problematic but we're going to push through and ha hopefully in introduce some, um, some fixes in, in the up and coming uh, weeks that will help with that a little bit. So yes, making uh, Astro Science 2. This is the next big development that's happened uh, for, from, for the things I've been doing at least. Anyway, we are starting to make the Astro 2 packs. And they're actually not bad. No, they're not too difficult. So making, an, making Astro Science 2 requires down here, you can see we've got the, uh, we've got the research servers which are happily t taking in the uh, microwave, x-ray, gravitational lensing and gravity wave data packs and some coolant as well. Um, and yeah, they seem to be quite happily making then, then making the, uh, the packs. Now, okay, the uh, the input of all of the cards is is a bit slow. That's that's fine. That's to be expected. It's because so far I've only done the sort of what I usually call the proof of concept, which is where I chuck down a load of buildings and try and get and get at least a few of the thing, whatever the thing is flowing through. So you can see up here we've got. Um, not very many of the blue uh, exposed frames coming through, and we've not got very many of the orange ones coming through either. Um, and in fact, there's some scrap on the belt there that's going to need to be tidied up at some point. But basically, the system is is working just rather slowly, and we can see that's true because there's a disposal chute over here. And yep, yeah, there's a, there's a catalog too heading up it. Um, and at the moment, I haven't done anything with them. They're just coming up here. But eventually, they will be loaded into the station over here, into these warehouses, and then put onto the train here. And I've already reserved spaces for them. So this train isn't going to go anywhere until we've made a huge number of these catalogs, or until we send, send it off manually. But that's that's absolutely fine. So in order to make those, you need you, you we're carrying on with the telescoping thing. So we, up here, for the as you remember from Astro One, we have all of these ranks and ranks of telescopes, and I'll talk about the the sheer number of them and why some of them are red in a little bit more detail in a moment. But we have loads and loads of telescopes passing down to the uh, astrometrics facilities and being turned into data cards. That's great. Down here for um, down here for the uh, for the X-ray and microwaves. This is a microwave telescope, massive orange dish, and X-ray telescope is a little blue. Um, it's a telescope. That's all we'll say about it. Um, those two are running away mer merrily over here. So we've got a nice input of the of the um, of the of the frames up here and down here, along with also um, mirrors as well. We need the we need the mirrors for this for this research as well. And they and those get trashed by the uh, by the production process and they get get kicked out as scrap. But at least we do, we then get all of the observation frames out that have been properly exposed, and we get them twelve at a time as well, which is quite impressive. Probably to uh, reduce the amount of um, damage, the amount of um, mirrors that are required, because it would be rather, it would be a rather expensive build if every, if every single build, if every single data uh, frame you produced required a mirror to make it. So those are then fed down, down here to some more astrometric facilities where they, they come in. They're mixed, they are combined with the data cards, and then they're exported as well. You, sometimes you'll get a data card, as, as you can see. The numbers are similarly as before. There's an 85% chance of it working, a 14% chance that the data card just doesn't get written properly and a four percent chance everything just turns into a pile of junk and rubbish so yeah you get um you get outputs of all the various different things so we've got we've got a disposal chute over here to get rid of the scrap and and, uh, and then another another one here that carries away the, uh, the 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 valid data cards that are produced and we've got the same sort of thing over here so this one requires eight uh, cards to go in and then there's a 75 percent chance of getting some observation data out and so and, and so on so these are these are kind of pricey and uh, once again you you're, you're taking in quite a lot of the observation data um, frames uh, in order to produce one one data card so they're they that, that's why up here I've got loads and loads of telescopes and then a much smaller number of the uh, orreries uh, doing the astrometric calculations because you tend to you, t you take in quite a lot of these and spit out uh, for, e for each time one of these machines runs so they're kind of pricey the other thing and the thing that makes Astro 2 slightly different and, and a bit more than just Astro 1 with some different with some bigger telescopes is that the other things you do the the, uh, the gravity the two types of gravity research they both take in these data cards which are called um, astrometric data and astrometric data is produced as part of uh, science as, as part of astro science one where you turn the visible the ir and the uv into into the astrometric data uh, so those those are being fed out here and now so i've had to put in a splitter here that so they're not just being passed down over here to be made into the astro one catalogs they're also then they also then overflow down here come down here and I'm pretty sure they're needed for something else later as well for Astro 3 and that means we, we need yeah we need to make lots and lots of those and they're passed down and then they're used in these machines to be made into more advanced things and down here what do we do are there any other funny inputs no uh, no and just coolant on this side so that's been rel relatively easy to pipe together 
But for all of this, I did have to make some new buildings. I had to make the microwave telescopes, I had to make the X-ray telescopes, and I had to make the grav facilities. So that required another thing on the sort of the the, the somewhat column of silliness over here that we've got. Uh, silly silly tower, I think we started calling it, or something like that. Um, because this is this is where we're making basically all of the buildings. And the idea was that well, all of you, nearly all of the buildings you require in space exploration, they have fairly similar requirements so they all require uh, low density structures or big big electric motors and um and heat shield tiles and assemb and space assembly machines so yeah we put put all of that stuff on the on the belts going up here um including the uh, low density structures there we go but then the problem is this isn't like angel bobs where a tier one machine of almost anything requires basically the same four or five or six ingredients and a tier two requires a different set of five or six ingredients here all of the machines tend to require these sort of things but then each machine also requires something weird and individual just to be awkward so let's let, let, let's run up the list quickly we've got down here the biological scientists they require pumps so that's a little bit funny so we've got some machines down here making pumps and putting them onto the onto the bus system as well this one also requires pumps but also copper cables so we are having to make copper cables off it here and put them into it specifically to make the radiators then we've got the supercomputers that now those are relatively normal but I think they required they might have been the first thing that required blue circuits but those those are okay they, those don't require anything too weird uh, these are these are very very normal Normal. This this is all standard stuff. Uh, here we go. Here we require storage tanks. So we've got a machine off to the side making storage tanks and then putting them onto the bus as well. So there's another thing there. Then here we require your uranium fuel cells. So we're having to make those on site. And okay, these don't seem to be required anywhere else. So I've only, I'm only I'm only making them here and feeding them directly into this machine. But you never know. But at the moment, that's this one's weird thing. This one requires laser turrets. So we've got laser turrets coming up the bus here. And it also requires accumulators. So we've had to start making accumulators. And then there was something else that needed the accumulators as well. So I put them onto the bus. Then here we've got... Yeah, here we go. This required accumulators too. So we needed, needed them there. Then here, more accumulators. Here, we needed steel beams. Uh, so we've had to make those from a supply of steel coming up here. And again, there doesn't seem to be anything else that needs a steel beam. So this just again, that one's being a bit funny in that with that. Here, those all look those are all things we've already got. So this was an easy one. Making the um, thermodynamics facility. Yeah, thermodynamics facilities. That was quite easy. They did, that didn't require anything weird that we hadn't already developed. Mirrors required a supply of iridium and lubricant and chemical gels. So we had to put those onto the onto, the, onto as well. Then here again, mir mirrors once again for the, uh, for the for the telescopes. That wasn't too bad. But then we needed red circuits for the um, for the grav uh, astro facilities. And then up here we need bio nutrient vats to be brought in for these ones. Um, uh, this, uh, lights here, lamps. We've got a machine here making making um, cables to make lamps to put to feed into here, and then up and then we then we get onto this one, which required gun turrets and, and concrete of all things. So that's a bit ridiculous, um, but we're going to eventually need those for uh, I think for the material processing, and then holmium cables, and then. Um, Aeroframe poles. This one's also aeroframe poles and mirrors again, and again, and once again, aeroframe poles. So I had to put in a system down here that's making the aeroframe poles, and this required a fair amount of finagling to get stuff in as well. So I, I had to actually. At this point, we didn't have beryllium on the bus, so I had to put beryllium onto the bus, pass it along here, pass it up through here. Then we've got a machine here turning the beryllium ingots into beryllium plates. Then up here, the beryllium plates needed to be combined, needed to be wrapped round. Uh, where is it? Up, up, all the way up here. The beryllium plates need to be wrapped around iron sticks. So we had iron on the bus already because we needed that for something else, like all of the tanks and probably some other things too. So we're making iron sticks here in this assembly machine, passing them across it, and then combining them with the beryllium to make the beryllium sticks. And it's just. Each, it feels like almost every machine, every extra machine we need, requires us to put in another feed, another another supply of another weird ingredient that needs to be made and some somehow crammed onto the bus. So this bus across here, it seemed like a good idea. I thought we'd need maybe ten things at most, maybe or something like that. But no, each, each time it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's getting a little bit silly. But fortunately, the throughput doesn't have to be particularly high because these are all the buildings that are being made in order to build up our external factory, our extra factory systems like over here. So you don't need a steady flow of um, laser facilities going through or, ast or astro labs or whatever it is that you're using. You just need a handful of them when you're building it up. So as long as you go in reasonably early on and say, yes, please make me, what, how many are we making here? Please make me 20 of these these telescopes. You're then probably going to be fine. It'll take a little while for it to actually make those. But then when you go off and you say, yes, actually, I would now like another 20 telescopes to expand. Or another, it's probably not even going to be 20. It's going to be another 10 telescopes to expand my facility over here. Um, the bots go, OK, sure, we've already got them in a box. He'll bring them over. And then while you're getting on with something else, these machines can make up some new stuff. So it's, it's a bit convoluted. It's a bit tangled. And it's a bit silly. But... 
it kind of doesn't matter because the, the actual throughput you need isn't all that great. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom of here, you can see that none of these belts are actually moving. We've got enough of all of these machines available already. So it, it's, it's absolutely fine. We have enough of everything except concrete. Um, but it, uh, it, but they, we just now have an enormous variety of stuff available here. And yeah, it's as I say, it's a little bit silly, but it works. The hardest part is getting additional things from the bus as the whenever the bus expands and then getting them onto onto here because this area over here is kind of full this area over here kind of full now i've made it a little bit easier because over here we took out the um was this i think this is where we were making thermofluid in the past so we've taken out the thermofluid from, um, production from here uh, we're going to bring more in by train if we absolutely have to but for the time being there's quite a lot in these tanks it's probably going to be okay at least for a while um, but Tristan has now also cobbled in uh, making holmium cable here. So we've got oh, he's not even taken holmium off the uh, off the off the bus like any normal person would. He's got a separate thing bringing it in over here by delivery cannon, which I suppose is fine. It's going to cause problems in the future when we switch over to, when we switch away from delivery cannons. But for the time being, it, it'll do. We can we can we can we can we can we can cobble something together here later. So he's making the cables down here and then feeding them up because presumably he's banking on nothing else requiring holmium plates. So we shall we shall see how that goes. Um, anyway, so yes, I have managed to make all of these build all, all of these new buildings up here, and it wasn't too painful. And so that's meant over here we can now build up the um, all all the facilities we need for making the um, well making the everything, and in order to make the the astro uh, astro catalog twos. I touched on the uh, the train system we're going to be having here in 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 a, in a previous episode. So eventually, as I say, these will all be fed in here. We'll have we'll have a mixture of all of them in in these warehouses, and then they'll be fed into the train, keeping the train full and happy. Uh, I'm in the wrong mode. Keeping the train full and happy of all of the all of the various types of catalogue it needs. Those can then be sh be, be shipped up here. And then they'll be dumped off here, uh, unloaded here. I need to fiddle with the uh, the filters on these on the, on all of these um, loaders in order to get everything in the right place. But then they can be passed over here, and we can then then we can we can upgrade these to start doing the next tier up of of astronomy of in, in, insight production, which where instead of taking in uh, one catalog and producing two insights, you now take in two catalogs and produce eight insights. So four each instead of two each. So in a way, it's kind of doubling it. And I think that producing the um, Astro two catalogs is probably a comparison comparable difficulty level to producing the Astro 1 catalogue, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I think that's going to be, I think switching over from these this recipe to this recipe is going to be a nice big boost for our, uh, for our, for our insight production. And that's going to be very useful because currently the insight production, or more specifically the energy science insight production, is the limiting factor in making the significant data. And the significant data is the limiting factor in producing all of the science. So at the moment we're still waiting for, basically, we still need Tristan to boost his production of Energy 1 catalogues. And he has boosted them a bit, I think, because we have had quite a lot flood in. We've done quite a bit more science in the last stream, so I think things are working reasonably well. But the problem is, the um, at the moment, all of, a lot of the, all of the significant data seems, well, no, half of the significant data is going up which half of it's going downwards but we're using a lot more on the down system down here than we are on the uh, on up because we're currently doing astro related research so we need to find some more energy related research researches to do in order to um, in order to use up some of this and stop us being quite so short of, of stuff down here but you know it, it doesn't it, exactly what we're studying doesn't really matter we, we there's a, a huge pile of science to do and we're working our way through it now granted at the moment we're doing rocket reusability which is a bit of a waste of time um because we're not really going to be using rockets very much for all that much longer however i do still need to do astro 3 as well before we can have um before we can have spaceships up and running and that that will be when we really really that and space elevators will allow us to just completely get away from rockets i i hope <laughs> we shall see how it goes though so I promised I was going to show you why these telescopes weren't working very well, and that is because, well, we one of the research one of the researches we did was was it this one? No, thermal radiating speed down here somewhere. Um, thermal radiating efficiency, and this allowed us to develop a new recipe for dealing for for uh, cooling thermofluid. And so instead of going from 50 to 50 warm to 49 cool, and therefore you lose two percent. This one goes from 500 uh, warm to 499 cool, so you lose 0.2%. So you're losing a tenth of the amount of thermofluid, so it'll go a lot further. The problem is, because it's go the, the recipe now, instead of pulling in um, 100 thermofluid and then churning gradually through it, it now pulls in 1,000 thermofluid and then churns gradually through it. And it takes a lot longer to run as well. And so that means there is an enormous amount of thermofluid buffered inside these radiators here. And that means 
we now have a massive shortage of it out here. So the, this this pipe is em the return pipe is basically empty, but the cold is basically empty as well. And I think the super chilled is probably going to be super cool. It's, it's slightly better actually, but it's still it's still a bit too empty. What we ideally want is to have all of this thermofluid stockpiled basically in these two tanks where they're where they're where it's ready to be shipped out and just pushed out onto the pipes and to have all of the output pipes so these ones the uh, the cold thermofluid the ones that are taking it out to the rest of the system we would like those to be full because then that keeps everything running but no all of the thermofluid is sitting in these in these radiators being gradually chilled down and it's a it's a 200 second crafting time as well which is Horrendous, very, very long time. Even with these speed modules in that are boosting the speed up to uh, plus 60%, so uh, about 50% faster than it normally runs. <clears throat> That's still quite a long time, and it means, yeah, with with it, with all of that thermofluid being buffered inside these radiators, it's it's a problem. Um, we need to every so often we get we get a we get 500 of it dumped out onto the on, on into the pipes here and it gets pushed through here and, in, in, and into here and then we cool it down further but there's still a huge amount of it in there and this is a problem because we don't have enough thermofluid being generated that said there is 36,000 in here and this pipe is full so looking across here okay this this is maybe I'm not maybe I'm um misrepresenting the uh, the problem actually I think we must have had another train of thermofluid arrive since I last looked at it because actually I take it back this pipe here is full so it's it's not a, it's, it's not a, um, a problem with it with it all being hoarded in here it's a problem with how fast these machines are running uh, so actually what we need to do is put in a lot more of these radiators it that's that's simply the problem is simply that we don't have enough of these radiators then we can drain out the 36,000 that's in these tanks and the uh, 30,000 in there so that's another 60,000 so that, that means you could put in another 60 of these radiators fill all those up and that would get the system running a bit more nicely so I think actually I take back what I said the problem here is not in the sheer amount that's being buffered in these machines it's the the, 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 the throughput is not high enough because the new recipe is to take significantly longer so if we look at this one we can see this this is the 50 to 49 and that takes 10 seconds the, um, and, the, and this one takes 200, 200, 200 seconds to do 10 times as much, so it's half the speed. So we, yeah, so I'm going to need a lot more radiators along here, especially as I'm continuing to build out down here and get things faster. Now, the ideal would be to start using the uh, the, the next tier up of radiators. Uh, let's see what they cost. So at the moment we're doing this this one here, thermal radiator two, but that's going to require astronomic science four and material four. So it's going to be quite a long time until we get those. So it's a nice idea. But not just yet. <laughs> I keep getting people in chat saying spaceships when or um, thermal radiator 2 when. And the answer is when we've done enough research for it. It's going to be a while, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we will eventually get there. But it's going to take a while. But at least I found the answer for this one. It's just going to be to extend this this radiator rank a lot further out this way. Um, I mean, if we double it, it's going to come out to about here. Could even triple it and it would still fit in quite nicely. So we can, we can make this a lot bigger and that will get a lot more of the thermofluid flowing through and then things will be a lot better over here um, but that does need need me neatly lead me neatly on to the uh, the next thing I want to talk about which is thermofluid production so over here I was, I was saying we're a bit short of it it seems actually that station's not doing too badly but over here we now have um, we have 19,000 in here I think when I started record just before I started recording we we're at 15,000 in each of these in each of these so it's it is being produced and at not too bad a rate but it's not being produced at the moment it's not being produced fast enough to keep up with demand and the demand is only high because we are currently filling up all of the buffers uh, we've, we've 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 started doing we started doing astro science here we started doing energy science over here is probably pulling some in bioscience up here we're pulling some in i don't think material science has yet claimed a load of thermofluid but it will do fairly soon so currently we have a reasonable supply of all of the um all, uh, uh, well, we have some thermofluid in all of these places, but we are pulling it through faster than we're producing it. So that's a, a bit of a problem at the moment. However, once we once things stabilise a little bit, hopefully the the demand will go down a bit, and it will only be we'll, we'll have a little bit of an increase in demand when we put in a load more pipes along here and stuff that will pull in a, several hundred of it. But we won't be putting in a, a system like a lot like this where we immediately demand. Well, what is it? It's um, demanding 20, 000, at least 20,000 in the station and an additional 30,000 in this tank over here and ideally another 40,000 down here. So that's about 100,000, almost 100,000 thermofluid. Especially with, oh, and then down here we'll have another, another 25 here. So it's more than 100,000 thermofluid. And each one of these systems that we set up is going to be pulling in that sort of 130,000 thermofluid. Uh, every, so, but when we expand it, it's going to be sort of 1% of that sort of demand. Uh, 
and then you only have to, and because thermofluid goes round and round and round and round heating up cooling down heating up cooling down you only have to replace the sort of the point two percent of it that's, that gets destroyed by these radiators so once things settle down we'll be okay the problem is we've got four massive systems that are trying to they're all going to require that 130 before everything starts to settle down so back over here well we've I've, I've been doing I've been doing a bit of work to try and get some more thermofluid flowing so I put in these extra machines I think that was actually in the previous stream not in not in the most recent one um, but then I looked at them and there was this horrible shortages of chemical gel and heavy oil and, and so on so I went and had a bit of a look into that and now it looks like we've actually got we've got a decent amount of heavy oil here so these machines are all running not happily that's that's good and we've got a, and we've got full pipes of chemical gel so that's really really good um, and that is because I put in an extra two chemical gel manufacturing machines over here, and so those are those are now pulling through the petroleum gas as fast as they possibly can. But they are ooh, just starting to fill up the tanks here, so we are producing the chemical gel ever so slightly faster than we're using it. Um, but yes, the problem is very much the uh, the petrol petroleum gas coming up here, and so we've got. Well, looking at this, we, we've got the delivery cannon here, and they're, they're coming up reasonably quickly. But it's not enough, as you can see by the fact there's no um, there's no petroleum gas barrels in here. There's no unbarreling going on, even though the pipe is empty. So I did a couple of things to try and improve that. And these are both down on Norvis. So we head down over here and have a quick look. Uh, where am I looking? Down here in the in the uh, in the big oil area. So now we've got um, I put in an additional two uh, delivery cannons. We've now got three delivery cannons that are trying to feed out the um, the petroleum gas barrels up in up, up to that one receiver chest in space. And so that's now this system is now running as fast as this little machine here can uh, can churn out the um, can churn out the, bar the the full barrels. If we look in here, then it's it's going pretty quickly. Um, Possibly I should be using stack inserters here. So let's let's see. Maybe if I put an up a stack inserter upgrade on that one and on that one, then maybe we can get them uh, and that one as well. Might as well. Maybe we can get them running through a little bit more quickly. But it's going pretty well. We we have significantly increased the amount of the, the throughput of these guns. And you can see occasionally we get a red light on one of them. But basically they're 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 delivering about as fast as they possibly can. So those putting in those stack inserters will probably make all of the difference. But that wasn't enough. It was still, yeah, we're, we're shipping it up a lot faster now. But in order to get things going even, even faster, I then also came over here and I tapped off the, um, these, the, these belts here where we've got the heavy oil and the light and the petroleum gas being passed over to here. So now, when, there's a, when, the, when we actually have enough rocket parts, which we don't at the moment, we seem to have a shortage of rocket parts for some reason, which is a bit crazy. Maybe that's why we're researching more rocket reusability. Um, <laughs> but eventually, yes, we, when we finally build a rocket over here and we can start loading it, we'll start chucking in the petroleum gas and the heavy oil it barrels into there as well from over here and that should give it, in, in, the hope is that, that will give us a bit more oomph so every so often we'll just have a massive delivery of the um, of the oils coming in uh, and that will that will speed things up to the point where we will eventually hopefully have enough petroleum gas to keep the system up there satisfied uh, we're also doing that that's the same basically the same thing as we're doing here with the with the cop feeding the copper in and of course that we're doing by bringing up the um, the red the red circuits and the uh, and the rough data substrates for making it into memory cards so yes, the thermofluid production, it's, it's going quite well, said in a sort of slightly questioning tone. I am tempted now that we've caught up with the, um, with the chemical gel production to an extent, and we are producing it faster than it's being used. I am tempted to put in another couple of machines over here to make the th thermofluid a bit quicker. But having now also now looked at the, um, the astro science again with a slightly more critical eye, and realised that the problem is in the rate of cooling and therefore the, th the throughput, rather than the amount of product we actually have in there, Maybe I'm going to change my mind about that and go back and fiddle with things. <laughs> uh, so that massive boost in the number of uh, in the amount of uh, petroleum gas we're getting through up here is also, as you'll not be surprised to hear, has created a, uh, a significant boost in the number of um, empty barrels that are coming through. So once again, we had some problems here with these crushers not able to keep up with the sheer quantity of barrels that are coming in. So I went, I followed through on my threat from last time, and I put in another load of machines over here, and this is easily capable of keeping up. And it was e also able to keep up when the uh, the barrel usage was at its absolute maximum. Now the hope, of course, is that we will soon be able to move away from barrels once we've got the uh, the space elevators up and running. But the elevator is still some way off. The elevator requires uh, material science pack two to be made, and we're still working towards material science pack one. So some way to go with that. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll um, we should we should wait and see. But we are at the moment we have a system that that does work, even if it's a bit gross. <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it. Um, oh yes, I also needed to get rid of. Yes, one of the problems we, we potentially run into with this is that we then fill these warehouses up because there is a barrels only produce one steel each, but when you're crushing 
this many of them and you're crushing them constantly you produce a lot of steel so we've got it filling up in this warehouse these warehouses over here um, and that became a problem they were they were they were at about 400 and something stacks which is getting worryingly close to full so I dropped in this train here which uh, that now is able to take the steel up up over and drop it off here uh, where it then gets brought down it gets put into the uh, into the system over here and this is a priority over the uh, steel that's brought in that's made from the ingots so when we so the system over here we, we will pass steel in here whenever there is less than 5000 in the system and the system means all of these warehouses here that rattles through through it and to, to down to here and it'll get passed out along this belt and go off and be used as steel by the whole system exactly as it, as has been being done for, eight, for before we also have then an overflow where we will uh, have this machine turning steel turning these steel ingots into steel plates whenever there is less than 4000 in the system so the idea is that we will always use these first but if we run out of um, steel that's coming from the barrel recycling we will then be able to use these ones as an, as an as a top up and these will be brought up by rocket as and when required so we, we will always have a plentiful supply of steel but we're using the recycled stuff first as is as is only correct however in that area down there there is some good news because um, whilst the the, um, the the thermofluid is struggling to keep up with demand the memory card production has seriously has now exceeded demand uh, we've got quite a because as you can see, we've got quite a lot of memory cards coming back along here. And that's because if we look over in the science area, in the science park, um, quite a lot of the processes we do to, in order to make science actually output a certain number of memory cards. So when we make these insights, we, turn, we, we, we have some, some good memory cards being outputted. There are lots of steps in a lot of the earlier processes that will output junk data cards, and those can be reformatted and reused. And over here, when we make the significant data, which we can do when we actually have some energy insights available, that also kicks out a load of blank data cards, a large number of blank data cards. So all of those flood down the recycling belt, and much like the thermofluid gets passed around and around and around inside each uh, individual area, the memory cards get passed around inside the entire factory. So over here, we've got this, um, the recycling belt comes down here and will filter out the memory cards. They will go back into the, tra into the system here, ready for the train to take them away and, um, and drop them off wherever they're needed. And it looks like the train has just gone off somewhere. So good, the system is working. And then if there's ever a shortage in here, so if we ever have, ever have fewer than 20,000 memory cards in, in storage down here, then we'll, then we'll put more in from the system over here. But for the time being, We've got up to well, there's 30,000 in each. That's 26,000. Uh, we're, we're fine. We have enough of the memory cards, so this is this is going very very well. Um, but the recycling is working as we would expect it to. And so, okay, here's here's the memory card trains come back now. Now it's going to fill up, and that will probably make these drop down below a thir the 13,000 in, uh, in each. Uh, you can see the numbers gradually ticking down over there in storage. Um, and when we when we fill this train up, which we will eventually, that we may we may find some more come through from here. But that's fine because you do get through some memory cards. Sometimes the junk ones can't be recycled. Sometimes the machines just completely destroy them. Um, but we have enough we have enough in the system that it'll it'll just go round and round and round. And it should basically and so and so we only need this now to top it up as 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 and when required. So yeah, that's that's working really nicely. I'm I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the last oh you know there's a couple couple more things to say that I, that I've done um, so we've got <laughs> uh, where is it yes over here we, we've got this is this is the machine that is recycling our, um, our our life support pack so the dirty ones are brought over here automatically by bot they're put into the recycling machine here uh, cleaned out and then put into here to be refilled which requires coal and water um, because they're carbon based filters presumably. And so that unfortunately also produces. Um, we, we, there's a certain amount of gunk produced from our breath. So we get. We also get ten contaminated cosmic water and ten contaminated biosludge being produced. And we've been just dumping them into these into these tanks for quite a long time. But I thought, right, let's let's sort that out. So I've now got these two machines up here that are taking in um, it taking in the, the contaminated uh, sludge and and cosmic water, and then and, and putting it into barrels and dumping it onto the disposal belt because that, as you may remember from before, means it can then be passed off down here. Where it'll be filtered out by these machines, we can grab the uh, those the two contaminated sludges here, and and that'll put the uh, put the gunk into the into the pipes where it can go up here to be recycled, and then drop the barrels onto the onto the disposal belt. I also put in an additional um, break off point here that takes out any bio sludge that happens to be on it and puts it down here where it gets un unbarreled and put into the station down here. So we've got 30,000 bio sludge, that's half a train. Um, at some point, Mark is going to, well, Mark has probably already set up a station that will accept this, but at the moment we don't have enough bio sludge to fill a train, so it's, 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 it's sort of irrelevant. But eventually that will be there. 
and I'm sort of reasonably pleased or ent mildly entertained by the way I've done this. So over here we've got the um, the heavy oil and the petroleum gas being brought up from Norvis. Uh, in, and then being un unbarreled in order to be turned into cosmic water or whatever else, I don't know, whatever whatever we're using it for around here, uh, science of some sort anyway. And then those empty barrels are just drifting up here and round here. Um, I put in this, I, I, I sort of extended this belt a little bit because before they were just being dumped straight onto this one. But this means they can now be grabbed by these two machines. So whenever we need any barrels, we've got we can we, we can grab them, put them in here, and put the and put the waste into them. And we're not producing the waste, we're producing the waste here so slowly that that's absolutely fine. The other place where we've got something similar is over here, where we've got a full-on recycling facility, and that means the only thing that comes out of it is scrap, which gets, goes down this belt and is disposed of in, in the way you've already seen, and also eventually bio sludge. And so I've done the same thing with the bio sludge here. They, it was just being stored in a tank, but now I've brought in a belt of steel. We're making some barrels up here, and then we're putting the bio sludge into barrels. So again, that can be put onto the onto the disposal belt and got rid of and put into back into the system, ready for other things to be done with it. And I think that basically covers everything I've been up to. Um, I'm going to go on and talk about what Mike's been doing, because if I don't, then tomorrow's video is going to be incredibly long, even though this one has already gone on a little bit, because I, I tend to ramble. <clears throat> I, I will admit that. No, this is this is science. We don't want, we, we, we've, we've looked at that already. So, Mike has been, because Mike is orange, he has been responsible for the uh, material sciences. So, uh, over over here, he's made a bit of a start in it. So far, he has, he has started producing the, um, uh, the material science testing packs. And so, next week, he's going to be starting on material science, I imagine, or possibly polishing things. And so that means he's getting, he needs lots and lots of the various raw materials. And so over here, we've got um, plastic that's being brought in by delivery cannon, but could potentially be brought in by train later. Same with um, iron and copper, rare metals, uh, imosite concrete and um, iridium they're all being merrily brought in here uh, current as I say currently by delivery cannon but we'll probably switch over to trains at some point they'll bring the all, all those materials in here and then they're being well because they're all all coming in in ingot form or at least all the ones that are in ingot form are then being sliced up by all these space manufacturers down here so this gets us the uh, the iron plates the uh, copper plates and the iridium plates then everything is passed up here and scooched over into these machines and these are making the uh, material science testing packs um, it's an interesting choice of, um, of of modules he's put in here but sure let's go with that uh, so what he's doing here the the, the uh, testing packs take in lots and lots of different resources and then uh, and, and make a pack now and the reason we're making these up in space or at least the reason I made them up in space in my last playthrough and I assume uh, Mike is doing it up here for the same reason is because they they only stack up to 10 as you can sort of see on the output side there um, and so bringing them, whilst you can you could produce them down on a planet and then you'd be able to use productivity modules I imagine and that would make it slightly more efficient in terms of raw resources you then have the the uh, the joy of the logistics where you absolutely load a rocket up completely and discover it's only actually brought you 5,000 of them uh, so that's a bit ridiculous so in this case it's much better I reckon it's much better to make them up here in space because otherwise the throughput is just so difficult to manage um, and material science gets through so many of them. That's why he's building them here. Because again, if you have to transport them around by train, I made that mistake as well, and and and, and learnt not to, learnt not to fairly quickly. If you try and transport them around by train, your trains are running constantly, but are never able to keep up with the supply or the demand rather, because they only stack up to ten. A wagon is only five hundred with the uh, the mods we've got with the space train mods we've got installed, because they take fifty stacks each instead of forty. Uh, and so it's, it's it's still it's not it's not big. We're not talking big numbers here. So basically, you need to make them on site where you're make, where you're doing the material science, so you can just shove enough of it down the down the um, down the belts and keep everything running. You do also need to run them out into a station, which is what's going on, or what's going to be happening here, so you can ship, ship them out, because I think energy science and possibly something else require them in, in relatively small quantities, but they do require them, so you do need to, you do need to be able to ship some of them out as well. Um, yeah, so things are, I'd say things are going pretty well here. The, the challenge of this stage this this system was getting all of the different resources in in and available over here because you you need you need so many different things in order to produce the material testing packs so that's that took him a, a significant chunk of the stream but he's now got to the point where everything is up and running he's got all of the uh, all the um, all, all the materials coming in and now next time he's going to be ready to start on actually making the uh, making the um, the science packs or the science data cards at least uh, we've already got the material. Uh, the, what, are, what are these machines called? The um, mechanical facilities. These are mostly being made, but there is a a receiver chest down here that needs some concrete to be pointed at it. And then once that once we've got concrete going in there, then that can start. Um, it can start producing the mechanical facilities. 
it's also worth noting that Mike is going to be somewhat is going to be taking a lot of the um, the excess materials that I'm producing over here and recycling because uh, material science takes quite a lot of that sort of stuff. So we've got steel here. We'll, we'll potentially be we'll be going over to him at some point, and probably any excess iron and copper from here will also be fed over to him because we. Just want to want to want to get it keep it keep it used up and um, and get it, get it taken away from here and uh, and make sure that nothing fills up. So he's going to be yeah the recipient of quite a lot of this stuff. Although come to think of it, I should actually be having a bit more of this copper pouring into here. I should set this 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 fill this number on this one to be something quite a lot higher. Yeah, 300 is not enough when we're when this one is loading it until it reaches uh, a thousand. So yeah, this should actually be more like this. This should probably be 2,000. Or maybe three thousand, just because that's an easy number to type. There we go. So this will now use up all of the um, all of the copper that's come for, for quite a long time, and until we've actually made enough of whatever it is that's eating up all the copper. And so that is why um, Mike has also put in all of these stations over here. These will be the ones for dropping off um, any overflow from locally, um, particularly for the, the the copper, the steel, and the, the and the iron, because they're coming. They're going to be coming in as ingots rather than as plates, which makes things a little bit more complicated. I should probably touch briefly on down on Norvis where Mike has been putting in all of the new delivery cannons, but I think finding those is going to be enough of a headache. Although he did say that he'd done some sort of um, horrendous spaghetti to get some of them in, so I imagine maybe over. Well, I know we've got ingots over here. Um, nope, we don't. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yes, this is this this is the sort of thing he's been doing. So he's got a drop. So in order to get, oh dear, no one, no one, no wonder. Um, Oh, actually, no, maybe maybe this belt was already here. So in order to get the, uh, the those copper ingots up into space, he's put in um, a belt round here with these delivery cannon capsules. He's broken off, he's split off a belt of um, copper ingots from there, and he's shipping them up from over here. Presumably, he's done something similar and tasteless over here for the um, for the iron ingots and steel ingots. Maybe not. Maybe there weren't any delivery cannon capsules in this area, so he's actually done it. So, oh no, hang on, there's a steel... Oh no, here we go. There's an, uh, an iron belt coming off over here, for there's a delivery cannon here that presumably is a... Uh, uh, oh, there's no, no shooting at Norvis Orbit. What's that? What's that one for? Materi oh, that is material science. Okay, so yes. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't look quite right, but you know, that is one of Mike's un unloading stations. Yeah, so he's got the iron coming off over here. Um, apparently, he doesn't—he hasn't needed steel yet, and um, um, which makes sense given the amount of steel I'm producing. So he's actually put in an additional um, delivery cannon capsule drop-off station just for the iron deliveries over here. Oh dear, no one, no one, Demark was uh, grumbling about him, him, him making a big mess. Uh, at least the, at least I think plastics have, uh, 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 it was a reasonably easy one because that's just down, um, not here, over in the plastic area. There was already a setup for plastics, so that's not quite so horrendous. And yeah, so he's, he's managed, to, but he's managed to cobble everything together and get all of the things he needed one way or another. <laughs> and it's got in the material testing packs, and that's very important because we are going to need large numbers of those in the uh, in, uh, upcoming in, in, as soon as possible. And get in, in the same for getting the um, the material science one and material science two up and running, so we can get some of these new toys I've been talking about for several months now. <laughs> so yeah, lots of work to do there, and the same with the Astro as well for the spaceships. To be fair, so it's, it's, yeah, there's quite a lot, quite a lot needs to be done yet. But I think this is a good point to cut the episode. I seem to have been talking for about 40 minutes, so it's uh, definitely time to def definitely time to stop. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, please check out the stream sponsor. That's uh, treefoil.be. Uh, they will host a Factorio or a Minecraft or a whatever else server for you for very reasonable prices. And if you use the code Lawrence Plays, you'll get 20% off your first month. I shall be back uh, tomorrow with, an, with the second half of this catch-up video where we shall talk about what uh, Tristan and Mark have been up to and have a look at some of the other planets as well for, for, for a brief glance. Um, I can't fit everything that happened in Norbit into one, into one video um, because there's just been so, there's so much of it now. Most of, most of what we're doing is up here on the space station in Norbit because we've all come back from our remote planets. On Monday, we should be carrying on with the stream. So yes, please come back, please come along for that as, and you'll uh, see how things have been getting on and we'll, uh, get, we'll carry on a bit further and... Um, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll get Astro 2 up and polished and running nice and quickly. Uh, Tristan, Tristan, Mike, Tristan's been looking at um, Energy 2 as well, so maybe we'll get that. Might even get Bio 1 and Material 1. You never know. We shall see how things go there. Uh, then Wednesday will be my uh, weekly uh, XCOM stream, so things are going kind of well there. We're getting lots of soldiers killed, um, unfortunately. We are, we are also managing to kill off lots of the alien menace, so I guess we are pulling gradually closer towards an endgame there. We shall see how things go, though. Um, Thursday is GTA videos, and then back round to Friday and Saturday for the, uh, for the Factorio catch-up videos as well. So, once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.